Hello everyone, this is David at Grow It, Eat This. I've put a bunch of the soil here that had sweet potatoes in it in a big container. And as you know, sweet potatoes just consume huge quantities of nutrients out of the soil. So I know this soil is really, really tired. It's still in good shape. It's nice and light. I just know it needs a lot more nutrition in it. So I'm going to add a bunch of organic fertilizer to this soil. Don't really worry about measuring it because it's not that strong a fertilizer to start with, but it is going to do wonders to make this soil useful again for my fall and winter garden. Then I'm going to take my pitchfork and, and try and mix it up some, pick out the last pieces of the sweet potato vines and little roots and whatever. Uh, anything I leave behind will probably sprout, but as long as it's really small, I can just pull it out. But as you can see, this is still some really good soil. But what I want to do now to add to it is I want to take some of my super duper compost that I've had, been working with and I want to sift it in there and basically go about half with the old soil and then half with the compost. It's funny, you can tell by the difference in the color. That soil used to look like that to start with, but my new compost is much, much darker. It'll take uh, an assortment of shovelfuls sifted out to, to get all of this working right. But it's well worth it because whatever I plant here for the fall and for the winter will just be so much better. Now, after I've done this for a while and I've pretty much got it all mixed up, I've about got this container up to the top so it'll be ready. I've got three of the sweet potato containers that I want to add this into to try and get them ready so that they're ready to grow again. Uh, these are two foot by two foot square so it's it's pretty easy to shake out the big pieces that you just put over into the next compost pile. And you just keep doing this over and over again until you get the thing full or however much it is that you're after. Usually when I get all done with whatever my project is I try and leave a bunch of sifted compost in one of these carts so that when you're you know, you're repotting a plant or something, you got some great compost right there ready to go. It's no effort to get to it. As you mix all this in, you're eventually going to need to mix it back with that tired sweet potato dirt. Uh, but that's not too hard to do. So this will probably be my last round. I have gotten so far about four containerfuls of this dirt out of this first compost bin and amazingly my second one is just about finished so I'm going to have all the compost I could use. It doesn't really sound like something people say very often but it is nice to really really make a lot of compost. The I get the truckloads from the tree surgeons will drop off the chips for me and then I'll use lots of um, of the grass clippings and that'll help a lot and if I need to, I'll put a little fertilizer on it. Okay, now that I've got all of this, remember this is going to be going into containers that had sweet potatoes in them. I've done some fertilizer, but I'm going to add still more fertilizer to this. One of the things about containers is that when you water a container, the water will drip out the holes in the bottom, carrying nutrients with it. So containers are, are not really good for holding on to nutrients in the soil. When you do it in the ground, there's nowhere to go. You're in the ground. So you water it and it just, you know, it may sink a little deeper, but it's still there. But in a container, a lot of your nutrients will literally just rinse right out the holes in the bottom. And if you get a really hard rain, that can just be, be just devastating. So I'm going to get this all mixed up good. And then it's going to be ready to use. The three sweet potato containers I have, I've already got about half full doing this same process. And this will just be topping them off the rest of the way. Here's what the two of the containers. I'm only going to show you doing two of them. The third one is just, you know, same thing over and over again. But you fill these things up with this nice fresh compost mixture. So the whole container will be basically half the old sweet potato mixture with a lot of fertilizer and then half compost with a bunch of additional fertilizer. When I get that mixed up, this is going to be super duper for growing pretty much anything I want. 
Now you can see I've got all three of these done. And what I've got from inside, it's been so incredibly hot. These things are horribly, horribly pop -em. But I've got some nice lettuces. I've got some nice Chinese cabbages. Uh, I got a couple of chard plants and some arugula. Oh, and I've got some cauliflower. Sometime or other, I'm going to figure out how to grow cauliflower here in northeast of Atlanta. It's a tough crop. It wants cool nights and moderate days. And we tend to go from sweltering heat to freeze in just a couple of days. So it's really hard to come up with it. But I'm going to keep trying. So I've been growing, getting these plants started inside. Look at how pop down those things are. They're at least a month later than I wanted for them going out. But it's in the 90s every single day setting records here in September. And it's forecast going into October to stay in the 90s. Uh, the heat has just been terrible, terribly oppressive. And we haven't had any rain that you could actually consider to be rain since July. So it's been several months. We're actually in a worse drought right now than the drought we were in back in 2006. Now these are my smaller cauliflower plants. Uh, what are they? Candid Charm, uh, something Charm is the variety. So we're going to get those planted. Maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we won't. But we'll get them all plastered in here, planted down. It won't be because they don't have great soil to work with. And then in that third bin, we'll be putting uh, uh, some Swiss chard and I think some arugula I have there. Uh, I know there's some Chinese cabbage, cauliflower, lettuce, Swiss chard, and arugula for the three bins spread out. Uh, the dilemma we're going to have is that it's still really, really hot. And we still have lots of those beautiful little white and yellow butterflies that just love to lay their eggs on these kind of plants. So I've got it's too hot and I've got the butterflies looking for places to do still another round of babies. So we're gonna have to cover this. I'm gonna put a hoop up like it was springtime and put a little row cover over it and hope that the the amount that the row cover heats it up is offset by the amount of bugs it keeps from getting to my plants. Don't know how well that's going to work, but we're going to try. I know if I just leave them like this, the, the caterpillars will have them devoured in a few days. So I'll get the last of these planted. Get all my little pots sorted out. And then we'll be ready to work on the hoop. My PVCs keep getting smaller and smaller as they, they break off. Some of these are probably 10 years old, these pieces of PVC you'll see coming up. But they're still working, and they don't recycle or break down. So I try and use them for as long as I can. When they get down to where they're just like a foot and a half or something, I put them into the corner of the rows to help keep the hose from flipping into the, into the garden and damaging the plants. So that looks like a nice, uh, either a cabbage or a romaine lettuce there. So we got all this planted. Now we'll see what we can do with getting the PVC up for the hoops. I don't know if it's because it's so hot or because I'm getting old, but I am definitely moving slower than I used to. But happily, I do still actually get there. Here's one of the pieces of PVC. Works pretty well. You can just wedge them right into the two corners. Push it into each corner. Then I'll go get another piece. I think the other piece is a little bit bigger. But the plants don't really care as long as it's covered. So now I'll go get the, the uh, row cover cloth. That, that's what you normally put down in early in the spring for the bugs. So there it is in a couple of big clips. I'll hold them there at the top. 
They actually took two pieces, one piece on each end, which is why they're clipped in the middle. But this will keep those caterpillars out of there. So then we'll be ready to go. Hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe. And if you like this, hit the like button. So YouTube knows this was a good one. And happily, 